Hello everyone. Uh, so in this chapter, we will generalize what we what we have seen so far. So so far, we talked about the first order differential equation, then second order differential equation, and we will generalize what we know to the nth order differential equations. Here in the equation one, you can see this is the general form of the nth order differential equation. You know that if you see parentheses uh, near the uh, powers, it means that this is a derivative. And our the highest derivative is nth order. There is a coefficient term n minus 1th order. And it will go until the first order plus uh, the constant term or y term equals the right hand side. So this is the uh, general nth order differential equation. And we will start how we can make sure that this has a, a unique solution. And this is what we are saying in the question 1. How can we make sure that, how can we guarantee that? Uh, this nth order differential equation have exactly one solution. The idea is actually the same what we did in first order and the second order. Uh, what we are doing, uh, our co coefficients should be continuous. And uh, in the interval that is given uh, with, the with the initial condition. That's the idea. You know what are those p0, p1, pn minus 1. Here you go. These are the coefficients. Coefficients of y term. First derivative, second derivative, until the n minus 1 derivative, which means that this is a standard form. You know that. And let's explain this in one example. Here you go. Determine the intervals in which solutions of these differential equations are sure to exist. Here you go. This is the fourth order differential equation. There's the coefficient. There's the, the third order differential equation coefficient is 0, it seems. And the second order coefficient. First order, again, it seems it's 0. And the y term and right hand side is zero. So we have fourth order homogeneous differential equation. And firstly, we need to make sure this is in the standard form. You know that in standard form, uh, the highest derivative coefficient should be one. That's why we are dividing the equation by t minus one. And this is what we get t plus one over t minus one tangent t over t minus one equals zero. And here the coefficient of y to the four is one because we divided it by t minus one. After that, we need to make sure that all the coefficients are continuous. Right. So uh, let's see that uh, this is one it's on, and p3 is zero. This is continuous everywhere. What is P2? P2 in this case, T plus 1 over T minus 1. That's why here this is P2. And it's continuous everywhere other than 1, right? The denominator cannot be 0. That's why I'm writing the interval as minus infinity to 1. 1 to infinity. 1 is not included. P1, again, the first derivative term. Since there is not a term first derivative, that's why it's 0. It's continuous everywhere. And P0 the uh, co coefficient is tangent t over t minus 1 and this one is continuous if you plot the tangent t you can see that it's continuous from 3 pi minus 3 pi over 2 to minus pi over 2 so in 2 pi intervals going like that and 1 is not included that's good because 1 also was not included for p2 that's why if, uh, for g of t since it is 0 it's continuous everywhere and now we have to combine all those terms and since we have only one should be out and this is the continuity region for p0 that's why this will be true for all differential equation so if, uh, if you take an initial value between those values then you will uh, know that this has a unique solution okay